Welcome to I Love Stocks. Miss Vegas is out today getting some R&R &R and we're going to have a little watch list here today and I'm going to talk about Slash ES, a little bit about the SPY, Jack, Walmart, Amazon, AMD, COTY, and Digly, D-G-L-Y. So let's go ahead and start off right off with the uh, Dow Jones here. Bring this down a little bit. Clean this up here. So we've had us a pretty good little Corona sell-off. She went all the way down here. We called three different support levels. One was at 20,000. The other one was at 18. And then the, the hardcore scenario would been 15. And we bounced off that 18. And I predicted kind of a stair-step recovery. It's almost like a V-shaped recovery, but we still had them stair steps. You know, you got one right here, and you have another one kind of a little upper, higher highs, you know, but it's still a stair step consolidate, and then we had the third breakout. So we've kind of had that recovery, then we had that flash crash on Thursday, which dropped about 1,900 points, and on the... Let me see here. If I pull up the 200, the 200 SMA on the Dow, we just run right up into that 200. So once we hit that 200, we had that pullback. And that pullback support level was right here in between this gap level of 25,030 somewhere in that area right there. And I'm going to go ahead and chalk that in there for the Dow. So what I'm saying is we more or less had this stair-step recovery that I mentioned in the video uh, that I, or at least in the room that I talked about and people have asked me what kind of recovery we were going to have back then and I think this is more or less a V-shape stair-step recovery where we've had periods of consolidation in that huge breakout on this upward wedge that pulled back to that support level of 24.98. So if we go to look at the slash ES We did have a major pullback and we did hit a major support level of 3,000 and we dipped a little bit, bit below that 3,000 and I'll pull that up on the daily here one minute. We come down here into this little, I got a lower support channel right down here for tomorrow just in case we go below but that 3,000 was a very critical area of support and we did kind of break that so I'm wondering if Thursday was a precursor maybe and then the, the dip on Friday when it pulled back to that lower support level of, of 3,000. If this is just a precursor of maybe one more dip. So I'm kind of going to keep my eyes open in this coming week. And I'm going to go straight to the SPY. We did kind of hit that 3,000 and bounced up. But we do have lower highs. And so I'm anticipating maybe another little pullback. But we'll just have to see. I'm, I'm bullish on the market. Don't take me wrong. I just got to kind of read what I think is going to happen. Now here's the SPY. We also hit that 384 area that I was talking about in the room and we bounced up off that and we had a low of just under 300. And it had a pretty sharp sell off also on Friday. So we did kind of retrace back up. It looks exactly as that slash ES. So I'm thinking we could have another little pullback. If not, it'd be nice to break up break out of the uh, I'm gonna say right around this 30535 resistance area and if we can break that we can get back up here to the new highs of 30753 but I have some concerns with the cases of corona rising in some areas and I think it was just a catalyst that the market was just a little bit overheated now back during the dot com com bubble Alan Greenspan came out and called it irrational exuberance compared to the way the market was at the time. And I'm thinking the same thing now, but maybe in a worst case scenario, that this is an irrational exuberance climb that we've had. And just, and the, the economy is going to change, and we're going to see a lot of changes in Wall Street and how people invest. So I'm thinking this last bounce was a little overreational over rational and we needed to have a little pullback and that's what we got on Thursday and I wouldn't be surprised if we get one more and then we bounce back up consolidate and create new highs 
here in another oh, couple weeks or so. But as the country re reopens, I think the stock market is also showing signs of, of good volatility. So let's go ahead and go straight to Jack. We'll pull up Jack. Jack is a, is a toy maker. It's for the kids. And there's a lot of social media activity on this right now. And we're going to kind of just take a look at, at, the, at the chart itself. And I'm going to pull up my favorite Fibonacci chart that I use when I'm looking at things. Sometimes this gives me a rough look. I always like to look at the, at the yearly. So let's look at Jack, J-A-K-K. -K. Jack had a resistance triple top breakout. We did pull back to that support level right here at 114. So in Jack... I'm looking at two critical support levels, and that first one's going to be right down here, just under 88 cents, right around 88 cents to, to 90 cents for a pullback support if it decides to go ahead and pull back on Monday morning and then bounce back up to this resistance level of 114. I do have a long resistance at 155, and that's on the yearly chart on Jack. So we have a low support right here, 88. Let me pull up the three day, the one minute, three, the one day, three minute, and see if I see anything different. I could almost raise, you see how it bounced up after hours and created a new high of 169 with a resistance of 165. So yeah, let's go ahead and see if this thing can pull back to a dollar with that low support right around 88 cents. You're going to have, you did have a little breakout after hours, and it's looking good. The momentum's there. So I'm going to call this area right here, this 103, a real strong buy. If it does have a knife and dip down there pre-market or in the morning and jump in the trade and take it maybe up to right around this 140 area. If not, I'll probably scalp it for 10 cents or see how the momentum rides up on Jack. But we do have a long resistance to break at 165 with a low support right down here at probably right around 103 area. If that doesn't hold, that 88 is going to be a strong buy back up into this channel. That's going to be Jack. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Walmart. Walmart, to me, um, is at a support level right now. I'm surprised that this hasn't run quite a bit because this has been a uh, essential stock for the Corona plays, especially when we had that that food shortage when everybody was out buying groceries and stuff. So I'm bullish on Walmart right now at this stage, and we're going to go ahead and pull up the chart on Walmart. And I'm real, real sincere about what we hit support level down here. Called it out in the room. I had a 117.04. We hit 117.06. And there, was, and there was a real critical area for me because I played this last week and took a small little loss. It just it just didn't, I timed it wrong. But now that we've pulled back to the support level again, this could be a strong buy up to resistance levels. And we're going to look, just look, take a little look at the yearly chart. You see we've had some pretty nice double, almost had a lower high up here when we had that second breakout. And that was 133.38. Then we had that other one at 132 around that area. We did pull back to that 200. And I'm going to look at the uh, yearly on this 200 SMA. And we went below that 200 SMA. So I'm thinking actually we're probably ready for a rebound at least back up to the 119 area. Have a little consolidated area and then maybe get up to this 120 where we had the triple top. And then we can bring it up into these new highs up here. I just think it got a little bit oversold last week. And it was just a perfect buying opportunity to take this trade back up and to break that resistance of 121. And that's going to be Walmart. The next one we're going to talk about is another hot Kakuna play. That's really, really has some pretty high targets put up on it. And that's going to be our favorite Amazon. Amazon's got a $3,200 price target on it. And it had had a pullback this week. So let's go ahead and pull it up on the SMAs and see what it says. WMT. Oh, I mean, excuse me. <laughs> AMZN. Oh, Jimmy. 
So yeah, we're way overbought on this stock for sure, as indicators tell. But we had an upper wedge right here, and she broke out of that upper wedge last week. Hit a high of 27, 22, 35, and then pulled back. Now this is on the uh, yearly chart. So we do have a solid support right here, right around the 2500 area. And I'm going to put it in right here at 2498. They're right around in that vicinity somewhere with another support level right here at 2528. Then low case scenario down here at 2474 and 2445 for a very strong buy. The resistance to break is going to be right around this $2,600 area. So we're going to play in a little channel right here and then maybe start to pop out and create new highs. You know, as a long investor, this has probably been one of the best stocks out there when it was real, real, real cheap years ago. And she's had a very good return, but they've got new target highs on, on Amazon. And old Elon Musk came out a week ago or so and said he wants to compete with Amazon. So we'll see and break up that monopoly, but we'll see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this up to the 20 day and look at it. We have a resistance level right here on the 20 day at 2500, 2498. I'm going to turn that into a real strong red line for a support level for a strong buy. If it does dip down to that 200 right here, another double confirmation that we, we did try to break it up a couple of times. And then the third triple top breakout on the 20 day, which is right here. And I'm going to flag that for a triple top. Oh, it was right in here. And we had that breakout, and then she continued on up, created a little resistance level right here at 26.57. So low support, 24.45. First support right here at that 24.98 area, and then resistances to break are going to be these next. Whoops. Need to turn that to the dollar sign. And there's one to be one right about in here. It's hard to find. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick it right there. 2560 area for the second, for the first resistance, and then we're going to bring it on up to a long of 2556. And that's the hard one. That's that's the one we got to break to bring it back up here to this double top area for a double top breakout. But let's see what happens this week on Amazon. Low support down here at 2445. With that first one right here at 2498 area, with the resistance to break right around in this 26, or I'd say maybe that 2560 on up to this $2,600 area to a hard resistance at 2657.90. And that's going to be Amazon. And here's another crowd favorite. It's the top 10 on the retailer's watch list, and that is going to be AMD. AMD's been on a roll. What do I like about AMD is I like that it's a pretty good competitor to NVIDIA. And we're going to kind of... Let me give me a second here on this. Up. I'm Bridget Green. And I'm Kevin Weber. And today I'm Bridget we're Green. Up. And I'm Kevin Weber. And today we're bringing up how to. Well, give me one more second here. I had to do something real fast. AMD, you know, is taking NVIDIA by storm. And that's what. Are, you know, are they on pace to take a lot of their business away from them? So, you know, can they keep up this pace? And I'm saying they can. You know, I've been calling this week, Vegas and I have been calling this stock out every bit when it was under 10 bucks. And here we are now. We're at 60 something. So let's go ahead and pull up the chart on AMD. We'll pull it up on the, the moving averages first. The simple moving averages. And we run right into that two, well, let's pull up the yearly. Well, I hate to clean this chart up. It's a soggy mess. 
but that 200 is right down here at 43 so we're way over bought but you know when we touched that thing we bounced right off of it during the crisis and then we almost had us a double top up here. We did have us, I think, almost had us a double top up here on last week at that right around that 59 area. So that's going to be what we're going to call a hard triple top resistance break. We did have some declining patterns, and I did call this out last week for a bounce, and we had a wonderful, beautiful bounce on this trade last week. I did a little chart and I posted it on social media I said you know if we get down to this 5214 area that we could have a pretty nice little breakout and by gosh it did break out of that fallen wedge and I'll pull that up on a 10 day just so you, or 20 days so you can see it we kind of had us a little fallen wedge right down here in that last past week and so I called that support level at right down here worst case scenario at 5167 we did hit that 52.14 and it had a nice little bounce then we had that huge sell-off off that bounce and then again we hit it again on friday and i called it out in the room and we did run up into that 200 day on that uh, 20 day one hour chart so can we pull back a little bit more and create newer lows is the question because we did have two lows right here or can we go ahead and break out and break this resistance level of 55.30 that's the question I have a resistance at 55.52, but after overlooking this chart, that the action that we had on Friday, I can adjust that down to 55.30. So that's going to be our hard resistance to break at 55.30. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up on a daily one minute. So at 55.30, the 55.52 is going to be the hard resistance area to break. Support level again is I'd hate to say it go below this 52.11 that would be a triple bottom and that could cause us to have another breakout to the top and that's going to be AMD I'm bullish on AMD any pullback is granted and then we're going to look at Coty C-O-T-Y Coty is probably one stock that hasn't moved here in the last during the crisis you know I think it's been brutally beat up women are gonna start wanting to put on their makeup start looking pretty again get back in social society so they'd be checking out Cody I noticed that the Kardashians are back in the media again which could give this a little more of a boost and so I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I think we've hit a bottom on we did hit a bottom on Cody and we've come up a little bit so let's go ahead and pull up the chart on the yearly on COTY and show you that Kylie Jenner is responsible for this dip and I think it's just oversold so I've got I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the yearly chart and have a look at it we did have a little double bottom down here at 320 we sold off during that crisis had a nice little bounce up pulled back to a double bottom and here we are below, I would call maybe a pivot point area in this little sell-off channel that we had. The 200 is telling you that it's way oversold. It needs to be up here in the price range of right around nine bucks. But for right now, we got to break this 50-day SMA, and then we're going to go ahead and pull up the EMA and see what I can pull up on the EMAs. The EMA is at 807. It's a slower. A faster stochastic, stochastic compared to the uh, SMA so I like using them when I'm day trading and looking for supports and I do have a low support on it for right now at 445 and I do have a resistance to break right here right around this the 628 area right around that area right there so let's go ahead and pull up the 20 day on Coty you see that we did have a nice little breakout on it last the week before last and we did have the sell-off last week and we're creating a little pennant flag right here see that that little flag right there that could be a, a, a sort of symmetrical flag or whatever you want to call it that could break a resistance level of 519 and if we can get above 519 we'll get up to these newer highs of 570 well there's one right here that I can't kind of 547 571 and then that target area up here between 628 and 669 so low support scenario 445 you know it can touch down here to 419 area 417 would be a very strong buy 
and that's going to be Coty. And then we've got one more to do, and that's going to be Diggly. You know, with all the controversy of, of, of body cams and all these protests and these riots and the lawlessness, um, I think digital cameras are going to be back in focus again for all of our first responders, police officers, firefighters, even ambulance crews and things like that. Security around businesses and Digley just regained compliance with, uh, with the SEC and they also just had a closing of an offering. So is this Digley ready for a rebound for, for a bounce back up this coming week? I don't know. But we're going to go ahead and look at it, and I'll tell you my way I think about it here. And we're going to change this over. I think we're setting up for a breakout, actually. We had a falling. We had a nice little, see what's happened here since the riots have broke out. This thing's really had took off. So we want to try to find a, a, an equilibrium or a solid support that this stock can bounce off of. The first initial breakout we had right here created a little resistance right here at 322. We did consolidate here at that 322 area the week before last. And so now we're, we're setting up with a falling wedge that could have a reversal maybe that I posted right up here. So I'm kind of thinking that we're sitting in a pivot point area. It could pull back to this low support of 325 and that is going to be a very, very very strong buy now if it does that that's gonna you know I, I don't know I think we're setting up for a breakout as you can tell right here after the falling wedge we broke out of that wedge here after hours on Friday so let's go ahead and pull up the yearly chart just to have a little look at it see we did have some highs up here it's just 322 also is another indicator to me that that is a solid support area and, you know, if I did see that 322, I'd probably buy a small amount of this and hold it long in a long case scenario. But this is a sector play for right now. Body cams, the riots, the protests, you know, everything that's going on in America. I think crime rate will rise a little bit. So this is give this stock the momentum that it needs to go ahead and run up. And we did hit a hard resistance at 7, 710. And we have had a good 150% uh, retracement off that high, off the Fibonacci right here at 382. So let's go ahead and pull up the three minute, see if I missed anything. Actually, I want to go back to the 20 day and give it one more analysis. Low support at 322. Resistance to break at 436. If we can get past that 436, we'll get into these new resistance levels of 470, 505, and then we got another resistance channel up above that 505 to 593. And there'll be a couple spots in here where you'll see a consolidated area. And I'm thinking maybe a pullback right here at the 540 back to these other support lines or maybe on back up, no lower than right in here at 476. But every time we break a resistance, that becomes a support. So always remember that when I'm charting my extended trend line pattern. When I, when I break a resistance, that previous resistance will become a support, vice versa. If, like I'd say, this is probably the pivot point area, that 436, and that's what we need to break to bring it up to these three next resistance levels to the last one. And that is it for the aftermarket report. I also want to remind everybody um, that we do have little links over here on the side. We have a Twitter bird that brings you to our Twitter page. If you have a Twitter account, Miss Vegas is constantly posting alerts in here. Hit that follow button. We're up to 3,381 followers in a short period of time. Also, keep an eye on, on, on our website. We have our stock twits links right here, our Pinterest, and also subscribe ring that bell and hit that like button for future updates of I Love Stocks. Actually, that's the wrong channel. No, that's the right one. <laughs> Have a great day. I Love Stocks.